hi guys hope you all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video I'm going to let you know how you can create a sample application that will be using Active Directory for authentication now there is a very important reason behind covering this video because there will be a sample app that I will be using in our Azure AD application proxy video so I thought of just letting you know guys how you can create your own sample application in couple of minutes without any coding skills required now the only thing that you need is a domain controller your AD environment and Visual Studio To make things exceptionally simple if you already have a lab where you do all the testing and it has domain controller Consider installing Visual Studio on your domain controller itself But that doesn't mean that you cannot install it on any of your client machine But make sure the client machine on which you are installing Visual Studio that particular client machine should be able to contact your DC because we need the authentication from your domain controller itself okay now there are n number of methods of developing an application creating it more robust location wise client wise but I'm going to keep things simple so that it is easy for you to just reproduce what I'm showing right now on the screen and you can do the effective testing for our Azure AD application proxy video okay so as I've said before all you need is Visual Studio you can directly download it from the browser and by default the Visual Studio that you will download will get at least 90 days of trial so the one which I am using right now is Visual Studio Enterprise Edition and I will show you how you can just go ahead and download it from the browser itself so all you have to do is you have to type download visual studio that's it go to the first link and first link itself will show you multiple types of visual studio or multiple editions of visual studio that you can download but the fact is that we need a specific component to be installed with our setup that is something which i'm going to show you right now so once you are on this particular page from which you can download Visual Studio, just click on this option which says Enterprise Free Trial. That's exactly something which I have done in my lab, okay? Now once this particular file is downloaded, all you have to do is you have to run this particular setup. That's it. Now there will be a new window which will open up and it will have different set of options which you have to select. This is the first pane that I'm getting out where I'm just going to click on continue and now it is downloading the rest of the components or you know to give you a console from where you can select multiple options or environments that you want to set up with the Visual Studio. Now once this process is completed I'll resume the video. Now the initial part of installation is completed and this is the first console that you will get. All you have to do is you have to select this option which says ASP.NET Web Application and I'm also asking you to select this option because there are something or there are a couple of videos in pipeline for which I will be using this particular section as well. So as of now if you only want to focus on Azure AD application proxy just keep this option selected and if you want to prepare your environment for the upcoming videos select this option as well now as you can see that this requires almost 8.75 GB of download so what I have done is I have already installed this Visual Studio both these components on a different machine and that machine is my domain controller itself to make it easy so that we can reproduce the issues multiple times but as of now this is the setup which I was showing you in one of my machine which is domain join but it's a Win 10 client okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my machine where I have already set up Visual Studio and on this particular machine it's a DC all I have to do is I have to launch Visual Studios with those two components installed there will be no difference in terms of experience that you will get all you have to do is you have to click on Visual Studio 2019 and the first console itself will ask you to create an application from this particular console all I have to do is I have to click on this option which says create a new project and 
pay attention that I'm not doing any changes in any code. The out of the box application that I will get will help me to understand how Azure AD application proxy works because I'm going to use the same application in our Azure AD application proxy video. Okay, so make sure from this particular console you select this option which says ASP.NET Core Web Application or if you want you can select this option as well which says ASP.NET Web Application. Let's choose this one because it makes more sense. Okay, so I repeat this once again. This is the option that you have to select which is ASP.NET Web Application and then click on Next. Here I'm going to name it as HR application because this is the example which we are covering in our application proxy video. So this is my HR application. Don't make any changes here. If you want, you can change the location where the source of these particular application is going to be saved. Okay, so now I'm going to click on create. The next option that I will get will be the most important option because there exactly I'm getting the option to choose the authentication these are the different application types i would suggest to use either web forms or mvc whatever you want because all these other parts they have different purpose we will cover it in some time but as of now you can choose any of these two to make things more organized i'm just choosing mvc option okay make sure this option is selected don't make any changes and configure for HTTPS because we need an HTTPS application okay even if your application is only working on HTTP that will work with Azure AD application proxy but let's add more security make sure this option is selected where it says authentication just click on change and here click on this option which says Windows authentication that's all you have to do Make sure you have selected this windows authentication option and then click on ok and then click on create that's all you have to do to create an application that relies on active directory for authentication but there are a couple of things which you have to keep in mind first thing make sure the machine on which you are creating this application will be able to contact your domain controller Okay, so since this is a lab which I have as I've addressed before I have used my domain controller itself This machine on which I have installed or I have created this application is the same machine which is AD or domain controller Okay, if you will do this in your lab, it will be exceptionally easy to understand how things are working under the hood Okay, now the expected behavior is that the moment I will click on IS Express this particular option the application will be launched and as you can see I'm not even clicking on any of the option and trust me it's not even required just click on this option which says IAS Express now since this is something which I have demonstrated in our Azure AD videos as well that when you are running the application for the first time it might take a couple of minutes but it will open up so I'll pause the video and I'll resume once the application has been launched now the application has been initiated and as you can see I am getting this prompt now this prompt actually means that it is trying to contact AD okay and the moment I will click on uh, username and password that means the moment I will enter my details and I'll click on OK I should be landed to my application page for this particular user and that's all you have to do now this is coming because of IE if you will use a good browser like Chrome or something like that you'll get the appropriate results but let me sh tell you something here which is also important and that is SSO I keep on you know getting this question of uh, what is SSO in comments as well as in emails as well so there is something which I would like to clear here and that is SSO is just a logic wherein a user should use same username and password okay now the process where the user is not getting prompt to enter username and password that's what we call Windows integrated authentication and there is a setting in IE itself which is responsible for that and let me show you that as well okay so if I will open my Internet Explorer properties okay and if I go to security and if I'll click on local intranet and now I'll click on custom level 
just scroll down to the bottom and make sure which option is being selected here when you're trying to reproduce any issue when it comes to authentication or SSO. Now, if you have to give your user a seamless experience, then make sure this option is selected, which says automatic logon in intranet zone. Now, since this is a DC, I'm getting this option, whether I want to save this for this entire zone or not. So I'll click on yes, and I'll click on okay. Now I will again close this application. Now, if I will click on IS Express, the expected behavior is I will directly land to the applications page without any username or password prompt. Now, the reason behind that is the current curb ticket that exists on my machine is being used by the browser to present it to the right authority. And as you can see, now I am not getting the prompt to enter my credential. Now, let's say if I revert the change that I have done, okay, let's say I go to security. And again, from here, I'll select local intranet custom level. And let's scroll down to the bottom and select this option of prompt for username and password. Click on OK, save these settings, click on OK again and close this browser. Let's again restart our application and let's see what is the expected behavior that we get now. Now the expected behavior is that I should get prompt to enter my username and password. Now, whenever you are implementing SSO, these are very, what should I say, fundamental things which you should keep in mind, which can be addressed with the help of group policy objects as well. So it all depends what is your end goal, what kind of experience you are you know, planning for your users so you can take care of all these settings. So this is an exceptionally simple, what should I say, demonstration which I have done, but this is something which is required for you to know how Azure AD application proxy works. So make sure that we have an application called HR application this is something which I'm going to use for Azure AD application proxy video to complete this process of creating an application and then do the demonstration which we show in our Azure AD application proxy video. Okay, so this was all about knowing how to create an application. If you have any question that needs to be addressed within the scope of this demonstration that I have shown, please ask that in the comment section as well as you can ask any question within the scope of our channel and I'll keep on answering your questions. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.